So, uh, warm welcome to everyone uh, here in the in-person classes as well as our online students. We are going to study on a very key subject uh, for our Christian faith. Uh, I already said faith, so the subject is about faith, okay? And it's so important uh, for us in our walk with the Lord. So, we'll try and understand what does the Bible say about faith. And um, in our course notes, we will touch on many different aspects. We will try and understand what is faith uh, and, you know, how did Jesus operate in faith? Were there men and women of God who operated in faith in the Old Testament, in the New Testament? And uh, we will also consider uh, aspects such as how to grow in our faith, how to develop our faith, how to operate in faith, what are all the hindrances that one may experience as far as their faith journey or their faith walk is concerned. So uh, it's quite elaborate. We'll get into all of it one by one. Today is an introductory class. So we will begin with understanding what faith is. Okay, So that's where we are starting off. So let's pray. And uh, we will begin with uh, chapter one today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this time in your presence. Lord, we thank you that we are able to uh, understand your word, O oh God, uh, and Father, get to the depths of your word. Um, and Lord, we just pray that, um, Lord, as we are enlightened by your word, O oh God, that Father, there will be revelation, there will be strength, there will be transformation in our lives. Father, once again, we bless you, we thank you, we honor you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, for us to follow along, please use the notes. Those of us who are sitting here, you already have the printed copy in your hands. So just follow, uh, you know, section by section as um, I go over them. And the thing for our online batch if you can please download the copy from the classwork section those of us who are e-learners you will find it in the textbook section so please go ahead download the pdf copy and that makes it very easy for us to um, track what is being discussed here Okay, so this morning I have a question to begin our class with, and that question is, today, what are you believing God for? Are you believing God for something? So if you are, you don't have to answer it, but answer yourself, is there anything that I am believing God for right now? Okay, so I'm sure we all have our own answers. Maybe some are believing God for good health. Some are believing God for um, their relationships to be strengthened. Some are believing God for finances. Some are believing God for wisdom, understanding. Some are believing God for um, his provision, his grace to fulfill what he has called us to do. So there is an expectation, isn't it? So we are looking at something and then we're saying, okay, I have faith in God for this. Maybe we are believing God to overcome weaknesses in our own selves, you know, some sort of a weakness of the flesh. Maybe it's anger, laziness, or, uh, you know, uh, I mean, there are so many things, right? Like um, um, lust, pride, jealousy. We've discussed many of these matters. So for us to overcome uh, all these weaknesses in our flesh or to overcome some form of temptation that you and I may be facing today, we need faith. We need faith to overcome. We need faith to um, do what God is calling us to do. So all of us need faith. Is that a yes or a no? Yes, we all need faith. And how often do we need faith? Daily? Okay, we need faith daily. And uh, daily, how often? Once in the morning, once in the afternoon, once in the evening. Would that be sufficient? No, constantly, right? Constantly we need to be in a place of faith uh, for us to 
see all these things i listed out some of them now whatever it is that you're believing god for there's a need for faith without faith we're not getting that or we're not getting there so faith is so essential faith is very crucial all of us need faith all the time so that is the reason we are going to take time to understand what faith really is and uh, then of course you know later on we will begin to understand how to apply it how to grow it how to um, live a life of faith so we'll begin with chapter 1 here and for the convenience of our online students i will also share my screen all right so we're starting with um the main part which is the understanding of faith okay so there is a scripture in hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 so if someone can quickly turn to that uh, scripture and read it from your version of the bible generally the scriptures that we are using in our notes is from the nkjv version uh and it's also printed in your notes if you want to read it off of that anyone okay i'm um, sorry to interrupt uh, could you please use the mic because online students can hear you now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things are not seen hmm okay so there are many different words in that scripture it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so this word faith right this word faith let's try and understand it where uh, what is the root word of this word faith so we get it um uh, from the root word pistis okay so uh, it's there in our notes here uh, which simply means credence or a firm persuasion or in other words basically we are convinced we are convinced about something and this word faith is a noun now interestingly a connected word okay which is believe comes from the same root word from where faith comes from and believe is a verb so as we said faith means that you know we are persuaded we are convinced we are confident right so that in we look at faith as a noun but believe is a verb which again means that you know uh, you're practicing being convinced or a sort of holding on to that word and having confidence in that word so believing is basically an act of faith okay, everyone got that faith is a noun whereas believe is an is a verb we believe something that means we are acting on what we are persuaded about or what we are convinced about okay so uh this scripture here um we we see that you know it it talks about having faith in god now faith is and then it also states that it is a substance now what is this substance substance we go back to the greek word um it is hypostasis and it means groundwork or support so when we are believing for something there is a groundwork or a substance that exists for that particular matter okay uh, now it's a little bit challenging to explain that but we see that there is a term called 
title deed used in the amplified version and that is probably you know one of the best ways that we can explain this term substance so could someone read out the amplified version which is also in our notes can take the mic and read it out now faith is the assurance the confirmation the little deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality faith perceiving or real fact what is not revealed to the sense okay great so uh, it's basically the same scripture but a little more elaborate right in the amplified version what does it say now faith is the assurance remember we said conviction um confidence faith is the assurance right of what it also uses the word confirmation title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses okay so we will elaborately look at this passage as we go further but one thing that we can um try to understand is that word title deed there so if anyone here knows about purchasing um something really expensive let's take for example uh, a plot of land okay so we're talking uh, in indian uh, understanding we're talking you know lakhs of rupees crores of rupees now if one goes to purchase something that expensive uh, usually what people do is they don't ask you to pay up the entire amount so if we assume that you know it's worth 2 crores or something as huge as that you're going to make the purchase what people would do is they would write a letter of uh, agreement like some sale deed something like that have you sign on it and uh, maybe you pay up a small amount initially and they give you what is known as title deed yeah, they they give it to you they give you the sale deed and you're holding on to the sale deed and then they may work out with you and say okay how about you pay up the entire amount of money in a matter of months or in a matter of a year or whatever you know both of you agree on now when you're holding on to that piece of paper are you actually owning that land have you already bought the land have you paid 2 2 crores to buy it not yet right but if we ask is that land yours what would be the answer yes you just signed a deal it's in your hands the the sale deed or the title deed is in my hands okay so i have complete confidence i know that maybe at the end of a year or two years i'm going to walk into that piece of land and think of constructing and all it's mine it's already mm -hmm. mine okay um but right now the evidence of owning it in the form of a title deed okay everyone got that point yes so faith is like that so now you have something now faith is right now we have faith for something that we are hoping for and that same passage will explain to us that what you're hoping for is in tomorrow okay what the fulfillment that we are looking for is tomorrow it's going to come tomorrow but now faith is meaning right now i have evidence i have substance i have title deed that this is going to come to pass that's what we call faith isn't it think about abraham god promised abraham god told abraham look abraham i'm going to bless you i'm going to make you the father of many nations here is abraham what does he have does he have a son no after receiving the promise one year two years up to 25 years where is the son abraham sorry no son yet <laughs> but what do you have faith then okay for him for us it's now then he had a title deed what we calling substance convinced persuaded confident god has promised 
I have faith in what I am hoping for. What we are hoping for will come later. But we have to check our hearts. Today, do I have faith? Now faith is. Now, is there faith? Am I believing God for something? Has God promised me something? You know, am I holding on to his word? Do I have faith in his word? Right? We could be believing God for all kinds of things. Many of us, we are here. We are in Bible college. Maybe there are dreams, visions that God has given us and he's calling us to do, um, you know, church planting, mission work, something in the area of technology, something in the area of, you know, um, medical sciences, education, family. Talk about anything, music, arts, entertainment, business, right? So we have all of that in our spirit as a promise from God. We are hoping, we are trusting, right? But what is faith? Now I am convinced, I am persuaded, I am confident, I am assured. I have what is the title deed. I don't have the entire land. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure. You know, we use in Hindi, we say pakka. <laughs> so it's pakka in my heart that God has promised God will do it. And now faith is that, faith is that conviction that I am holding on to. And we also said substance, right? Substance, or we use terms like groundwork and um, uh, support, right? So what is that? What is that? So even though we can't fully explain it in our language um, and say that, hey, like for example, Abraham, people could have gone up to him and said, Abraham, how do you know that you're going to be the father of many nations? I don't know how Abraham explained it. He probably would have said, I know. And his friends would have questioned him more. No, but how? How exactly? Like, explain yourself. I don't know how he did it. He knew. He had the substance. He had the groundwork. Something in his spirit where he knew right, that God has spoken. His word is truth. And it is going to happen. So that is the groundwork. That is the substance. Even though we can't really... Uh, explain it. We can't really um, share it with the world and, and say, hey, it's going to happen. Like, wait and watch. We can't. Maybe they look at us and wonder and say, what are you talking about? I can't see anything. Okay, I can't see anything. It's invisible. The manifestation is not yet there. But there is something. Manifestation is not yet there. Manifestation is in the tomorrow. But if we have faith today, now, Faith is the substance. So there's something in our spirit where we are clear. We can hold on to it and say, God has promised. I can't explain everything, but it's true. God will do it. Right? You can ask many men and women in the Bible, Moses, how, how are you going to lead thousands of people? Have you seen the Red Sea? You know, there's a Red Sea right ahead of you, Moses. How are you going to lead all these people? Here is Moses going up to Pharaoh, very courageous. And he's saying, okay, God said, let my people go. Do you think it takes faith to do that? How are they going to cross the Red Sea? What's the log logical answer to that? There is no logical answer. But Moses had something when he went and took this bold step. What, what did he have? Faith. My God will make a way. My God will go before us. He will part the Red Sea or whatever it is that comes in our path. But I heard from God, I'm sure. He had a groundwork, right? Uh, something he could feel in his spirit, if I may put it like that. Something uh, within his spirit, the substance that, yes, God has spoken, it will happen. Ask Joshua. Joshua, are you sure? You're walking around the walls. People are laughing at you. Joshua and all your friends, everyone's laughing at you. But Joshua at that point, he must have had faith, substance, right, within his heart. So he had faith. And in order, once you have faith, what is the action? Believe. So he believed. He believed. These walls are going to come down. And he continued doing what God called him to do. So he carried faith. He carried the substance of what God wanted to accomplish in and through him. And so what we're saying is when we're believing God for something, we need faith. 
And faith is the substance. There's a groundwork, there's a support, there's something in our spirit mm -hmm. that God inside of us, which we can hold on to. And yeah, it will come to pass. It may take time. That's another thing. We'll discuss about it, but it will come to pass. Right? So I like to uh, use this analogy. It's not perfect. Uh, but if you can imagine, like we are familiar with this place, right? This uh, this hall where we are sitting. We know where the chairs are. We know where the, you know, the fans are, the tables are. Now, if you switch off all the lights, pitch dark, okay? And uh, one of your family members or relatives who hasn't seen this hall comes and says, uh, be careful, you know, um, you're, you're walking around in that place in the darkness. You can still kind of navigate because you know, right? You can feel it. It's dark. You can't see it, they can't see it. You can't explain to them that there is a table here, there is a chair there. No, you can't. It's very dark. But is there a table and a chair? There is. There is. And you're telling them, no, there is a table. No, there is a chair. And they're saying, where is the table? Where is the chair? OK? But there is a substance. There is evidence in our spirit that God has spoken. He has given us the promise. So it's a title deed. I think title deed is probably one of the best ways to uh, explain it, uh, that God has given his promise or his word. Let's look at one more word there. It's just one line, right? Hebrews 11 verse 1. But there's so much that you can dig deep into. That's the word evidence, evidence of things not seen. Uh, and hopefully by now, we got a picture. There are things that are not seen, but there is an evidence. Where is the evidence? Outside? Inside. There is an evidence. Because there is faith. There is an evidence of the things hoped for. So again, I come back to the same question. What are you hoping for? Is there anything you are hoping for? Because faith is attached to what we are trusting God for. So there need to be things that we are hoping for. So if this morning we're sitting here and we're saying, I don't have any hope, you know, anything, whatever happens, happens. We'll see tomorrow. We'll take it as it comes. Well, that would not be the ideal way to live if we're talking about faith. There's got to be something that you and I are hoping for. What is it? Are you hoping for a good education, a ministry, breakthrough, deliverance, healing, peace, anything, right? Go deeper in God, stronger relationship with God, overcome challenges. There's got to be something that we are hoping for. And faith is attached to what we are hoping for. If we are saying, I don't have any hope, then where is the question of faith? We are not believing God for anything. We are saying, OK, whatever happens, happens. right? So there's got to be something that we are hoping for. And if we are struggling in that area, we could again pray and say, God, heal my heart. Why am I in this place where I'm not expecting anything from you? where I'm not hoping for anything from you, right? Is it that, you know, we are not trusting that God can do this or God will do this for us? What is the issue? Why is there no hope? Pray and ask for healing in our hearts and say, God, put things in my heart that I can believe you for, trust you for, hope in you for. So there's got to be things that we are hoping for. And faith is that solid basis um, on which we can even hope for these things. And when there is faith, what happens is it's faith that brings these things which are hoping for into reality. So I uh, am always constantly reminded of this one pastor, a Korean uh, pastor who shares his testimony about how when he started the church, no, there were like three to five people in the church and God had given him a very big vision. And he also talks about how, um, you know, God 
helped him uh, see that vision um, like he would put in he would put certain numbers in his heart and say okay now the church will become 300 people believe me that it'll grow to 300 people then again you know say okay now believe me for 3000 people like that so and the church grew really huge and large but you know uh, that testimony he shares how uh, when he had only like maybe 3 to 5 people he would go sit uh, you know people would be seated on sunday and he will start preaching right so you can imagine with me it's a hall there are only 3 to 5 people and 3 to 5 from his family and maybe one friend so those are the people who are his congregation and he used to preach like he's preaching to 3000 people you know on top of his lungs and the people sitting there would tell him pastor why are you screaming i i ears are hurting okay we can hear you very well but you're shouting pastor just like calm down relax when you're preaching so he shares how he was so consumed by the promise of god in his heart he was preaching to 3000 people he can't see right now right now only three are there but faith right faith in his heart where he's saying no 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 i know you're three but i am preaching to 3000 people right now and he was consumed by god's vision he was consumed and he talks about how you know he was um, like how people say like you eat drink sleep cricket right so something like that dreaming about god's vision god's going to do this you know it's it's going to be powerful it's going to be wonderful uh, this is his example okay we may not relate to this example but is there something that god has put in our hearts which we can hold on to as a dream and say today i have expectation in god for this i'm hoping for this i'm trusting god for this right now there is no manifestation right but i have what is the proof of ownership or the title deed in my spirit so this is how god works we look at the lives of many men and women we'll come to it god speaks god gives a word god puts a promise right and that's where faith begins and then we have a substance and we trust god today now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things to come that's the proof that's the proof faith in my heart is the proof i may not be able to explain it to everyone okay so that's a different matter but is there substance is there evidence in my heart or you know maybe god makes a promise to a community or a group of people do we have substance and evidence for that so uh, some people like to use the term sixth sense okay we have five natural senses by which we interact with our natural world so this is a natural world i'm able to see i'm able to hear i'm able to uh, smell taste feel and so i know what's happening and the natural world you know there's communication coming to me through this there is a sixth sense that must be active at all times and that is called faith faith is the sixth sense why because it perceives the spiritual world so we are able to communicate with the spiritual world through faith now if we lack faith we're missing out on all that god wants to say all that god wants to do in and through our lives so we've got to strengthen this sixth sense strengthen it that you have people who um you know test perfumes uh they go they smell and they say hey is it right is it not right and immediately they know or oh, which perfume this is how they trained their ability to smell their senses and so they can perceive quickly the same way when we can train our sixth sense the sense of faith we can walk with god every day and we began by saying it's not about okay today uh, is a first class on faith 
uh, in Bible college. So faith is applicable now and it's not relevant tomorrow. No, at all times when my sense, my sixth sense is well trained, I can perceive, I can communicate with God and know what God is up to. So it is faith that connects us to God. Okay, anyone ever ask the question, uh, what is it that God is most happy about? Okay, anyone? Have you ever asked that question? I know at one point I did. Just to find out, hey, what is it that makes God very, very happy? I hope I can do that to make God very happy. What do you think makes God happy? Some of the things. Sorry? Obeying him, wonderful. Trusting him, yes. Depending on him, okay, depending on him. Yeah. Anything else that makes God very happy? Faithfulness, okay, faithfulness. We are faithful to God. We listen to him, okay. We listen to him, we, we yield to him, obey him, all that. Let's look at a scripture from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Wow. It's like God is giving us the answer, direct answer to that question. God, what pleases you? Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So for me to relate with God, for me to walk with God, have a relationship with God, worship him, read his word, there's got to be faith in all of this. If there is no faith, if we are just doing it as, okay, this is an exercise, we have to do it, let's do it. We're missing out the key element that touches God's heart, which would be faith. Without faith, it is, is it difficult to please God? What does it say? Impossible, impossible to please God. So what is God looking for? In that case, what is he looking for? Faith. He's looking for faith. So if God sees me today, what do you think he's looking for in my heart? Faith. Is there faith? Same thing. As he looks at all of us, where is the faith? That's what he's looking for. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that additional line there tells us having faith in the fact that God is good. He's very fair. You know, when, we, when we seek him, when we trust him, it's not like God says, okay, you do, you're not going to get anything. He's very fair and very just. If we have diligently sought him, what does the Bible say? He is a rewarder wow that's so encouraging remember the other day when we were talking about prayer we said you go pray to your father in secret your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly there are rewards to our faith and our believing okay and so for us to relate with god there's got to be faith without faith i can worship without faith i can sing some songs without faith I can pray without faith. Okay, I'll pray. Who knows whether he'll answer or not answer. Faith is missing. But I can't relate with God like that. There's got to be faith when I'm worshipping, when I'm praying, when I'm reading the word. I'm saying, okay, God, I'm reading your word. I know you're going to speak to me. I'm going through this situation. I know you're going to direct me. Right? So then I'm engaging with God, but with what? Faith. There's faith in my heart. God is a good God. God is a powerful God. He's a miracle working God. He's a faithful God. I'm, I'm believing. I'm believing for all of these things in my heart. And I know if I engage 
he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him yeah sure i may not understand what that reward is right now but we will taste of his goodness and taste of his rewards okay but faith is what we need in order to relate with god and without faith you no know, god is displeased or he is unhappy and we are quite clear about um you know this thought right now uh, let's continue we also see that you know jesus christ hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 it says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of god so it's talking about Jesus Christ Jesus endured the cross how did he endure the cross right in the scripture right we 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 see that um there was a joy set before him or there was something that he was hoping for expecting even as he endured the cross so then did Jesus have faith he did right he had faith in whatever he went through the struggle he went through the trials he went through the persecution he went through the physical pain that he went through there was faith and hope in his heart that there's something waiting on the other side of what i'm going through what was that so he knew that he will be back with the father so that i'm sure would have been the greatest thing that he was looking forward to being back you know together with the father and beyond that he was going to fulfill the mandate for which god sent him what is that redeeming mankind becoming a ransom price for sinful people so he knew that all of this will be completed and there will be many sons and daughters who can now come into the kingdom because of his work of redemption so there is an expectation there is a hope there is a faith with which jesus went through all that he went through what kind of faith did he have now we can state um, even just by looking at this verse here it says author and finisher author and finisher of our faith okay imagine someone uh, like in school we've had in textbooks right we have like chemistry textbook physics textbook maths textbook now if you have a question in chemistry who would be the best person that you can go to and ask the, that question you're reading a textbook and who would be like the best person to go to and ask the question hmm? the teacher okay the chemistry teacher good yeah nice answer yeah ideally the person who actually wrote that book because that's his thought process and you know uh, or the team sometimes textbooks are written by a team of people so you go to them because they are the authority on that subject and of course the teacher will you know share and describe and help us learn but the ultimate answer will come from those who authored it jesus he carried faith and we've established that but he is the author and the finisher of our faith meaning he had perfect faith he grew his faith to a degree or a level where he is the perfection of faith so if i want to learn learn about faith how to have faith you know what is faith jesus is my pattern jesus is my teacher jesus and his faith is what i am going to look at in order to strengthen my own faith he is the author and the finisher of our faith the life he lived and the faith that he carried so that's something for us to learn from and uh, jesus is the originator uh, or the very source of our faith he is the perfection of faith and we must hold on to him and we must have faith in god we'll talk about many other things soon uh, one additional point here in our notes uh, states that faith is not 
mental gymnastics okay so when i was in school i was just going to uh, go for my 12th board exams i had a set of friends who uh, you know who were also preparing and then they called and they said hey come we'll show you one method that uh, you can employ uh, and you're going to get very good marks I was, I was very curious i was like wow what is that tell me you know apart from studying they were telling me you have to sit for 10 minutes every day and you imagine you imagine yourself you're getting 100 out of 100 in science in maths in english right whatever subject you're taking up so uh and say it many times say it a thousand times i'm getting 100 i'm getting 100 i'm getting 100 right do you think it will work hmm to an extent okay okay maybe in this case it's more about building our confidence and that's why the students were doing that right but let's take another example uh, imagine that i can't sing like i just can't sing at all okay and then i tell myself i can sing i can sing beautifully i can sing like chris tomlin i can sing like darlene check i'm just confessing do you think that can happen yes what if god has not called me for that yeah so see to maybe an extent right maybe an extent but if i'm saying that okay i'm going to be the next and put some worship leader's name it won't happen because what we are doing is it's just like mental gymnastics we're saying something we're saying that we're believing that that's not faith we'll come to it we'll come to what you know faith really is faith is to believe in the truth What is the truth? Truth is what God says. Okay, my word is truth. John seventeen seventeen. So there's a big difference because we have many things going on in the world out there where people tell you, yeah, you imagine, you say, you believe. That may or may not actually happen because did God say it? Is it a promise from God? Have we, you know, confirmed that? If God has given a promise, then yes. you say it you 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 know shout it you sing it makes sense but if it's not the truth and we're just listening to something and we're saying okay i have faith that's not faith okay we'll we'll talk more about it now now that we've established that jesus is the author or the source of our faith another point we can consider is there is a scripture in mark 11 verse 22 where the lord jesus told us have faith in god now the literal translation of uh, the bible and uh, the modern king james version there it's actually have faith of god have faith in god means that i'm believing with my faith but the literal translation actually there means having the faith of god so is it possible that god gives us his faith i want to call it god kind of faith faith of god jesus is the perfection of faith so when he inspires that faith into our hearts when he breathes that faith into our hearts we can carry the faith of god now that's a privilege that's a blessing that you and i can actually walk in so god is willing how how do i get this god kind of faith or the faith of god we will study there are two primary sources to get faith like this one of course is the word of god the word of god without word there's not going to be any faith okay and the spirit when the holy spirit speaks to us and the holy spirit helps us now let me just quickly touch on one more point uh, the next section and then we will pause um, after that faith is based on relationships okay and a relationship with god In James two twenty three, we are told about Abraham. 
Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You know, friendship, it's a relationship in our lives. We have friends, we have family members. Think about this. God is calling a man my friend. What does that tell us about Abraham's relationship with God? Did he have a relationship with God? Yes, he had. And he had a close one at that. God is even calling him my friend, Abraham, a friend of God. But how did these two friends, God and Abraham, relate to each other? Just, you know, ahead of, of what we stated, it says, Abraham believed God. What is believing? It's acting on faith. So faith is there, the assurance, um, you know, the credence, the conviction, faith is there. Abraham believed, meaning he acted on the faith. So he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay, God counted him righteous because he believed. Remember, we also saw in Hebrews 6, Hebrews 11, 6, faith pleases God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So there is a relationship between Abraham and God. And there is faith in that relationship. That's how the relationship was built. Now, why are we talking about this? Sometimes when we hear about faith, it might only sound like it's you know, some, um, some formula or, you know, some mechanics, three steps to have great faith, five steps, 10 steps. Okay. Take that formula, put the formula, get the results. What do you want faith for? You want money, you want, you know, job, you want this, that five steps, six steps. Can we go about faith like that? Yeah, because we don't see that in Example, as far as God's uh, relating to people is concerned, someone like Abraham, who is the father of our faith, God has a friendship, a relationship with him. And faith is part of that relationship. Faith is not outside the relationship. It's not a formula or, you know, some something, a gadget. You take it, you plug it in, get the results, put it back doesn't work like that. As I get to know God more, as I trust God more, as I see him work in my life, what will happen? Faith. You know, if you can imagine a tank, okay, faith level is very low. Sometimes you have, right, on your bike, it shows you reserve. It's on reserve now. Oh my goodness, how to go to Central Church? I have to ride from here to Central. What do you actually need? Come on, get some fuel. Get some fuel. Raise it up. It's got to go from that low to becoming full, right? So as I'm riding, I need that. I need fuel. As I'm relating with God, I need faith every day in my walk with the Lord. As I apply faith, employ faith, walk by faith, live by faith, my relationship is being strengthened. And I'm also understanding faith better and better and better. So all this is needed as we are going to grow in faith. So. Uh, I know there's a, quite a lot that we have discussed today, uh, but I would encourage us to please go back and uh, read up our notes so we'll have a good understanding. Uh, but if there are any questions, we can take it up quickly. We have two minutes, so we will take up questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So uh, Biplav is asking if a believer has faith in God and he's worshipping other gods. Uh, then what, what is the question? What would be the consequences? Consequences, obviously, we know. Like even when you go back to, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments, you, sh you will not worship any other gods, right? Yeah. Uh, before me. God said that. So it's plain disobedience. It's plain disobedience. And there's no faith there. Uh, 
I mean to say, according to the New Testament, mm -hmm. is there any scripture written about that? Mm. See, in the New Testament, uh, obviously, like even when Jesus he preached, somebody came to him and he asked him, like, what are the uh, greatest commandments? He says, right, the first one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, you know, um, mind, with all your strength. So, God is calling us to be devoted to Him. And we can't do this thing of, uh, you know, worshipping God also and having other things, uh, other, you know, if you want to call it gods in our lives. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Praise God. Uh, so we'll stop at this point. Uh, let's pray and uh, we, we close. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for helping us, Lord, get an understanding of the subject of faith. And Lord, we pray that each of us, Lord, will rise up, get a hold of this truth, Lord. And God, that, um, Lord, we will accomplish mighty things, Father God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.